Hey everybody, I'm George from DinosaurGeorge.com. Let's answer some of your questions. First of all, I'm standing in front of the Triceratops located in the Witty Museum in San Antonio, Texas. If you get a chance to come to the Witty, you gotta check out this incredible dinosaur. All right, let's get into it. Um, Cameron from Kokomo, Indiana says, hello George, hope you're doing great. I am Cameron, I hope you are as well. Uh, on to my question, which one is larger, Torvosaurus or Sorophaganax. Thanks for answering my question and have a nice day. Cameron, thank you very much for the courtesy. I hope you and your family have a nice day as well. Who's the biggest? Well, it happens to be Sorophaganax, and it's kind of neat that you wrote this because I just finished preparing two giant skulls. One was Torosaurus, I mean Torvosaurus, and the other was Sorophaganax. Sorophaganax is by far the biggest, and he is really a big dude. He's kind of cool. Doesn't it look like this horn is like cut right through my neck? All right, uh, 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 Michael from Farmersville, Texas. Um, hey, DG, how are you? I wonder if a T-Rex who lived in Texas could take down an Alamosaurus. P.S. I love your Jurassic Fight Club series and can't wait to see DGTV. Michael, thank you very much. Um, first of all, I just posted the first episode of DGTV. I hope you've had a chance to see it. I hope you liked it. And thank you so much for the kind words about Jurassic Fight Club. Could Tyrannosaurus Rex take down an Alamosaurus? Woo, that would be tough. Even though Tyrannosaurus Rex is a monster and he absolutely was the king of the dinosaurs, uh, Alamosaurus was a big dinosaur. I don't think Tyrannosaurus would have messed with an adult Alamosaurus. Now, the babies would have been different. If Tyrannosaurus Rex came in contact with a, with a baby Alamosaurus, I think he would have attacked, no questions, and he probably would have won. But if had there been an adult around, it would have been a different outcome. All right, Douglas from Edinburgh, Scotland says, Hi, Mr. Blassing. Who do you think would win in a fight between Spinosaurus and Dinosuchus? Thank you for answering my question. Well, Douglas, thank you for taking the time to write to me, and I'm glad I got to answer your question. In my opinion, Spinosaurus, even though he is gigantic and he's huge, I don't know if his jaws would have had the ability to penetrate that body armor on Dinosuchus, Dinosuchus being a gigantic crocodile. Now these dinosaurs were separated in time, dinosaurs, Dinosuchus is not a dinosaur. These creatures are separated by a great amount of time and they lived in two different places. So chances are they would have never come in contact. But if they would have, in my opinion, I think Dinosuchus would have had an advantage over Spinosaurus and that if he ever could have gotten a hold of him, then it would have been lights out for the Spinosaurus. The good thing about Spinosaurus is he's got a much farther reach. He's much more mobile. Uh, he would have been, and if the fight took place on land, Spinosaurus simply could have worn down, Dinosuchus down. So that's a hard one to guess, but in my opinion, I just don't believe Dinosuchus uh, would have had any problems at all being able to take care of Spinosaurus, even though Spinosaurus is big. All right, my buddy Zach from Uniontown, Pennsylvania says, Dear George, hope you're doing well. I am Zach. I hope you're doing well. And please say hello to your family and your father for me. Uh, I've got two questions for you. In the first Jurassic Park, would T-Rex have shocked its victims by breaking its bones? And do you think T-Rex could be bigger than what we think? Your friend Zach. Zach, uh, brilliant questions, my friend. You always ask the best questions. Um, yes, I do believe Tyrannosaurus Rex would have wanted to inflict a dramatic injury into his prey and then step back and let that prey die. You see, there's no reason to continue to stay and fight because the chances are you could become injured. So it makes a lot of sense to me that Tyrannosaurus would have acted like a lot of modern predators, and that is simply inflict an injury and then back away. Your second question, uh, do I think T-Rex could be bigger than what we think? Absolutely man. Just because we found the biggest uh, animal, the biggest specimen of a species, doesn't necessarily mean that represents how big they could get. Um, we often hear people talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, we hear people lose their, didn't your voice, doesn't your voice change when you're in your teens? <laughs> I'm a little bit older than that. My voice just changed. <laughs> anyway, um, we hear people talk about how big a dinosaur can be. Well, that's based on what we've found so far. Whenever we find a new specimen who happens to be bigger than the last, well, then we up the ante and we say the dinosaur can be bigger than we thought. So, yes, I think it's, it's quite plausible that we have not yet found the biggest Tyrannosaurus rex. All right, finally, Jan. I think you guys pronounce it Jan. I think that's how you pronounce it. You're from Hamburg, Germany, and I think in Germany, I think that's how you pronounce it. If not, you may pronounce it Jan, but for the sake of uh, guessing, I'm going to guess that you pronounce it Jan. If I'm wrong, my friend, please send me an email and let me know, and I apologize in advance. Hi, Dinosaur George. Hope you're doing fine. I am Jan. I hope you and your family are doing fine, and I hope everything in Hamburg, Germany as well. Here is my question. 
In an interview, Jack Corner says that in the next 10 years, scientists will know how dinosaurs were colored. When the interviewer asked him how they are going to find out, his answer was, I won't tell you. Do you have any clue how it's going to be done? All the best, Jan. Well, Jan, <laughs> that's kind of funny that he would bring that up and then not be willing to give the answer. Um, the University of Texas in Austin has already been able to identify the color of a dinosaur. They were able to look at preserved feathers and using a scanning electron microscope, they were able to find what we call melanosomes. That is sort of the things that give uh, the, the uh, color, it's the pigment basically. And then by charting that out, they were able to determine what color this dinosaur was. Um, I think it's Ankyornis. I want to say that's who the dinosaur is. I, I'm almost certain it's Ankyornis. Um, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But uh, I think that's who it is. They were able to determine its color. So my guess is that they're going to use something like that same technology to be able to determine the color of other dinosaurs. I'm probably sure that's what Dr. Horner was talking about. All right, everybody. Thank you very, very much for um, uh, taking the time to write to me. If you have a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page, fill it out and submit it to me. But keep in mind, everybody, we get a lot of questions and we can't always answer them all. Until next time, everybody, take care of yourself, take care of the people around you. And for you young people out there, practice your reading because reading is very important. I'll see you all soon. I'm going to get back to finding out why Herb has stabbed me in the neck. I'll see you.